You're listening to Swinger University with Ed and Phoebe. Bringing you an educational podcast about swinging. Here are your hosts, Ed and Phoebe. Good evening. Hi, Ed. Hello, Phoebe. Welcome to another sexy episode of (laughs) Swinger (laughs) University. How to pick your best lube. And this topic is primarily geared towards women. Obviously, they're male counterparts as well, but it is from the perspective of a woman and the vaginal health of a woman. I am extremely passionate about this topic, and I did a crap ton of research. I have two things to say about this. One... Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that we're actually recording this episode because it's taking I th- forever. I think we I think we predicted this episode coming out about three months ago. Yeah. And it just didn't More, happen. Longer. It was supposed to come out before December. Yeah. Didn't happen. Yeah. Then it was January and the move here we are. and Yeah. Lots of over planning. Well, it's interesting when you start down the road of research and you go, oh, and, you know, becomes a can of worms. It's like a house remodeling project and you you key in on one thing and then you you start with one thing and then you read the article and you're like, oh, well, what does that mean? Three more things. Right. And then you start go and then you eventually start to link everything together and then you have to consolidate and shrink it down to where it's nice mm, no and appealing shrinkage. for everybody. Yeah. 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 And the second thing that I want to say about this is, yeah. as you said, this mm. is most important to women because honestly, from a man's perspective, if it's wet and slippery, <laughs> we're all good. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> women's vaginal health is really important. And interestingly enough, it's complicated. It's so complicated, and it's starting to drive me apeshit, honestly. No, really, it's some bullshit. It is Like, bullshit. it's crazy. I know. What's involved with this. We had no idea. I mean, no, we, we had a little bit of an idea. Yeah. Like, we knew before we started the research that putting sugar, glycerin, in the vagina... Probably not a good thing. Right. Well, I figured that out when I was, you know, dating and using that. But, you know, you... But it's so much more than that. It's crazy how much more. And guess what? You're all going to (laughs) know how crazy it is. All right. To use Ed's little quirk. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. It's all right. Today we're going to unpack all the great information about the types of lube, your health and safety, and why the most popular oil-based lube, coconut oil, is definitely not your best choice. Many, many hours have gone into researching this topic to give you a well-balanced and informative podcast. I have included all the sources in my reading notes, and when I say many hours, I can most assuredly say... I've literally spent more than 60 hours reading and researching this topic. It's insane. Most of the data comes from scientific sources, and I've included information from some of my favorite products and websites. So, first, a bit of insight. And I apologize. I am going to do most of the talking because, you know, it's my topic. You know, man has his place in the world. (laughs) Silent right. and behind the woman. Silent and behind? As <clears throat> it should be. I mean, behind <laughs> the woman. You were behind me the other night. That felt really good. Oh, mm, it did feel good. Mm-hmm. I like the front, too, though. I know you do, but I like behind. Behind is good. I woke you up at six in the morning with a little surprise tripod. All right. According to the WHO, 
Personal lubricants are regarded as low-risk products and are subjected only to limited regulatory controls. This is why there's so many products out there that require your due diligence. Like anything, just because it's on the shelf at the store or being sold online doesn't mean it's good for you. Right? right. I mean, I Look love at the Lucky Charms just aisle. like any other person. Oh, yeah. But it's not really that good for you. Corn syrup in everything. Vitamins that don't do anything anything there's yeah your grocery store is filled with a bunch of crap sure yeah you have to be a selective smart savvy shopper so you also might be interested to know that most lubes are not tested on human beings but my skinny pigs and the vagina of a rabbit which happens to have a different ph value because the rabbit's Vagina is designed where their urethra passes through huh. their vagina. So it's all different. these tests that they do aren't really very accurate. We're going to get into that. So it's all kind of crazy. I know. I was like, what? A rabbit has a urethra in their vagina? It's one way to flush the system out. That led me down a whole other path. I was like, what? Mm. I was like, I got to check this out. But I'm not going to let you... <laughs> You all can research that by yourself, but that was a fascinating side. <laughs> all all right. the vaginas of the world. Right? I was like, what? Okay. Here are some simple things you may want to check. Has your lube expired? Wow. That seems like you check your food, you check your medicine. Why not your lube? Right? Yeah. Never even thought about it. It really does matter. And Slickwood states that theirs last about a year opened and three years unopened. So even though they last a long time, they degrade. And you could potentially get a skin reaction or find that the lube doesn't work as well if the chemicals are prone to changing over time. Wow. So you just have to be careful. Uh, lifespan is also shortened. When it's open to air and you've got your dirty little fingers in there. That never happens. I know. <laughs> you have heat, sun, and some brands combat this by using a, a pump. Like Uber Lube will combat the contaminant factor by the pump that they've designed into their bottle. That way... All the bacteria from your hands, hello, COVID-19, is not being, you know, transferred into the lube. Right. Well, almost anything exposed to the air changes. Oxygen changes things. Yeah. Oxygen reacts with metals and changes the metal over time. So with iron, it turns to rust. With aluminum, it oxidizes. And apparently, even with lubes... Air changes it. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to be careful. Um, some lubes have certification. The European Economic Area, the EEA, does have a certification for lubes. They mark all their lubes as CE. Uh, better grades are marked CE followed by a four number code. And those are considered grade two. Thoroughly tested and approved for actual use in the vagina. Something that the U.S., of course, does not do. We're so behind in everything and it drives me apeshit. So if you want to get a good lube and you want to get good sunscreen, you got to buy it overseas. And honestly, that's where I get my sunscreen. Which is funny because you've got lube that's not certified for actual use in the vagina. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> it's oh, not that God. important. You'd, you'd really be surprised through all the research that I had done. <sighs> I'm going to get on my little soapbox here. You know, it's a man's world. Of course, we have Viagra, and that's super important for men. But God forbid if we were to actually do some real high-quality research on vaginal products for women and put in some great 
research studies as to what's really effective for women right of all ages and, you know. and not just effective from a lubrication standpoint so don't don't misunderstand what we're talking about all of these lubes from coconut oil all the way to the stuff that we're actually going to recommend will lubricate right the problem is what are the side effects right exactly that's the problem mm -hmm. exactly so what is the problem Phoebe. <laughs> well, before we break down the differences between lube bases, a little bit of education. Ooh. So I'm going to I'm going to school you, Ed. All right. I'm in the university. I'm here to be <laughs> educated. <laughs> pH matters. Is your lube pH friendly? Look for specific words on your lube vaginal pH matched or pH balanced. Your vagina is naturally acidic with a pH range from about 3.2 to 4.2. However, your vaginal pH can change throughout your lifetime and it's usually higher than 4.5 before a person has their first menstrual period and after menopause. So, if you don't have the right pH lube, it can actually cause dryness. There are charts on pH levels of water-based lubricants from the Medical News Today, Smitten Kitten, and the National Center for Biotechnology, which, we'll, which we're going to post in our notes and references. And I encourage you to check out those charts as it will greatly help narrow your choices of lube on pH alone. PH is pretty straightforward. You can usually read it right on the bottle. They're labeled that way, which is pretty good. But most Lubes, of them don't. Well, and, and that's the thing. If you that's go into your problem. average grocery store, they won't say anything about no. pH. Mm -mm. It's just, this is slippery. Right. And most of those lubes, and we'll call out a couple, the, the KY jellies, the Trojan lubes, most of the lubes that are off the shelf are glycerin based if they say water based they probably have glycerin in them and they don't even mention ph i'm not sure if they say water based they have glycerin in them i'm not 100 percent positive about that because a lot of the lubes that i am reviewing are water based ah I don't no, have but glycerin but the opposite of water-based is typically something that's silicone-based. True. So most of the lubes that you'll find in the grocery store are glycerin-based. True. So and they don't say glycerin-based. They just say... It's just probably the second or third ingredient. Right. Listen, if you're going through the aisles and you're checking to see whether it's got a carb count a protein count, mm -hmm. you should be checking your lube to see if it has a glycerin count. <laughs> it's th You're putting it in your body. Yeah. And you're we not. are going to mm. talk about why glycerin so bad. And the warming ones. Oof. Oh, my God. All Horrible. Right. Really, really not bad. I mean, really not good. Mm -mm. Okay. So past pH, we're going to start talking about another really cool term that we'd never heard of. I know. And it's awesome and it brings brings oh. all of high school chemistry back to mind i know it's so cool i feel so you do use the things that they teach you in high school i know osmolality what think back ed to your junior high science class oh i remember that science class did you oh did you have a hot teacher or did you just have hot I did she was a hot redhead she was a oh, really you're Wait, okay, I haven't. She was an story. older woman. Uh, oh, that doesn't stop you. It's a thing. <laughs> but yeah, she wore like tight blue jeans. Wait, I, okay, so your science teacher was she a was hot redheaded woman, older lady. Yeah. Glasses, of course. <gasps> Did you? Have I won't a mention thing? her name to protect the innocent. Do you have a little thing? That's not me. Do you have a crush on your teacher? I didn't, but in retrospect, she was pretty hot. Hmm. I had a crush I mean, on. I would have done her now. Mr. P, 
I won't say his name. I know it. It's very clear in my head. I know exactly how to spell it. Mm. In high school. Oh, amazing. Blue Science. eyes. I'd leave class and then I'd come back to class just to ask him more questions that I really didn't have. But I oh, didn't you're such a up. naughty girl. I, know, I was so bad. He was such a flirt, though. He yeah, was, was a flirt? Oh, yeah. He was a flirt. I'm sure you were a flirt. Yeah, well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't consider myself a flirt. Oh, you're a flirt. You are a flirt. For mm, sure. No, no. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So. Osmolality. Ed. Osmolality. Spontaneous movement. Of one set of molecules through a membrane to a different concentration of solution in order to equalize the two. Or the simple diffusion of water from one concentration to another across a membrane. Or your salt balance. This is really important, which I will go into next. Yeah. Anybody who's got a water filtration system that uses reverse osmosis or if you put something that's got a lot of salt in it, women are familiar with this. You drink really salty food, you feel bloated. Why? Because you start to retain water. That's why I took ham off the grocery list this I week. I know, but I love ham. I it's know, so it's tasty. good, but... Mm. But the salt causes your cells to absorb the salt Ooh. and the water floods into your cells to try and dilute that salt. And that's why, that's what osmosis is. Right. So if you're using a lube that has a hyper, hyperosmotic. Hyperosmotic. That's it. Hyperosmotic properties. Not something your vagina is normally exposed to. It will deplete the moisture from your cells, leaving them dry and actually sheds the outside layers of your epithelium, leaving you with an increased risk. Oof. What kind of increased risk, you might ask, Ed? Well, here's the thing. We just did an episode on... STIs uh -huh. and it turns out that when your cells start shedding you've worn down those cellular barriers and they're more prone to viruses things yep. like oh you know HIV oh, yeah. herpes simplex genital herpes B BV bacterial vaginosis for those yep. who are not familiar with that and once you have bacterial vaginosis BV that opens you up to a whole other increased risks like HIV-1, gonorrhea, trichomon oh, trichomonas. I think that's misspelled. Is it? Trichomoniasis. Ah. And urinary tract infections. Yeah. So your natural health of the vagina is amazing i mean when it's healthy it's not dehydrated it doesn't have any weird chemicals in there and your cell layers are healthy it can fight off some pretty nasty shit it's when you introduce weird stuff that compromises the integrity of you of your health and ingredients that have high concentrations of hyperosmotic properties are uh oh spermicides Things like nonoxinol 9, glycerin. Uh oh. Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding. ding. Hey, there's our uh, five point word from earlier glycerol, yep. prop propylene glycol, polyethylene glycol. She gives me all the long I know. scientific words because yeah. I have this. I'm very cunning linguistically. <laughs> Dude, that was coming. The yes. long and short of it is, if, you, mm. if you've abraded your skin, so think about it. You fall down, you skin your knee. What happens sometimes? It gets infected. Why? Yeah. Because the barrier of your skin is designed to fight off infections. Yeah. It, it's like armor. Right. So if you break down the armor of the vagina, the skin, the cells that protect the vagina, and 
wrap and envelop you, <laughs> bad shit starts happening. Right. And later in the podcast, I'm actually going to talk about how the inside of your mouth and your vagina doesn't have that extra protection layer like our the skin on our arms, legs, and basically yeah. the rest of our body. So we don't have that extra layer of protection. So it's really important to be conscious of what you're putting inside Protect your body. Protect your vagina. It's important <laughs> for all of us. I like the way you say that. All right. So ingredients that have high concentrations of high sir. Gosh, darn it. You know what? I think it's the alcohol you gave me tonight. <laughs> I'm trying to lick her <laughs> up to take advantage of her later. I was so good at this earlier. Ingredients that have high concentrations of hyperosmotic properties are your spermicide, blah, 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 which is what Ed said. But those warming lubes tested in a study actually killed the cells of your vagina wall. Thank you, petrochemicals. Ta-da. Yeah, nothing like a nice mobile one oil to... Oh, but it feels so good. Yeah. Ah, no. But I'm killing everything. Well, maybe it's like drugs, you know, it feels so good, but it kills off your brain cells. Don't kill your vagina, please. No. So, most commercial personal lubricants have high osmolalities. They're around 2,000 to 6,000 MOSM per kilogram, according to the WHO, this, in comparison, is far, far higher than the female vaginal secretions of 250 to 380 MOSM per kilogram. So here you have lubes that are like thousands, hundreds. Ten times. Yeah, of what these lubes have. So this is not okay. And the WHO recommends that the osmolality of a personal lubricant should not exceed 380 MOSM to minimize the risk of your epithelial damage. All those nice, healthy, squishy, feel-good cells inside the vagina. Which right? are important to protect. I know. So your vaginal, the third thing of our education little section here. The vaginal epithelium layer. What the hell is that? Well. The inner lining of the vagina consists of multiple layers of cells that help prevent pathogenic microorganisms from entering the body. That's that protective layer, but right. we're talking about infections yep. getting in. Mm -hmm. The cells of the cervix and the vaginal epithelium generate a mucus barrier. That's the slippery part for those of you who are not familiar with it, <laughs> in which immune cells reside. Yeah, so it's really important because, as we mentioned earlier, it protects you from infections, BV, STIs, and disease transmission is rarely transmitted across an intact and healthy epithelium. This comes from frequent exfoliation of the cells, low pH, and immunity in the tissue. So when your pH is thrown off, this affects your natural barrier to disease. And in addition, according to several scientific papers, the osmolality is high and it can cause vaginal and anal epithelial damage. Like you can destroy them. It's not good. No, it's really, it's, it makes me angry. Well, because they're basically throwing stuff on the market to make a profit without the consideration of what the actual health implications are I know. for the women who are using these products. I know. So, Professor Charlene S. Dezuti put it this way. Because we're made up of salts sugars and proteins our body naturally wants to maintain that equilibrium we talked about that earlier yep. makes sense when you introduced a sugar-based lube which is essentially <laughs> a candy bar in your vagina don't do it 
right? It sounds fun, but don't no, no. don't do it. Cucumber might be better. Mm. Your body's going to react by releasing water from its cells to dilute the sugar. And so then your cells shrivel up and they actually look like a raisin under the microscope. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I know. So All right. Don't is... put sugar, don't put salt, don't change the pH. It's a It's an ecosystem. Yes. You have to protect that ecosystem. It's It's like um you know, when you take antibiotics, you know, the doctor will always say, oh, make sure you eat some yogurt or take some acidophilus after your course of antibiotics or if you've been on it for a while. Usually one course of antibiotics isn't going to mess you up, depending on the person. Right. But it's the same thing. Like you... <laughs> and you use lube much more frequently than you use antibiotics. Yeah. And honestly, one one evening... One swinger evening out using the wrong lube is going to jack you up. Well, especially because if you think it's a it's a hotel takeover party, you've got three different cocks <laughs> inside of you, a whole bunch of lubes, random, random fingers. Right? Who knows what else? I know. Wait, who knows what else? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Wait, somebody's what? got a candy bar. They were having some little no, snacks. No, no, who no, knows? No, no. But, you know, you, you're... At risk to begin with, and then you're introducing yeah. really bad lubes. Right. You just you're just adding insult to injury. I know, I know. So your ingredients really do matter. The high quality ingredients matter, especially to those who are prone to genital infections like yeast or bacterial vaginosis, and Parabens, the World Health Organization, WHO, calls attention to preservatives like esters of P, hydroxobenzic acid, aka parabens, that can cause irritation and sensitization in some individuals. And parabens are also thought to act as an endocrine disruptor and can mimic the effects of estrogen. Oh, that's going to mess you up. But... I was doing some additional research just the other day because I thought this topic was done. And I was researching and I was researching and I was like, what? So I found this other thing. So, however, there are more prevalent estrogen exposures you can reduce in many areas of your life. Like soy, plastics, clothing, cosmetics, sex toys, cars, shampoo, and shower gels. So Wait, you're sticking a car in your what? Right. <laughs> If you're reducing parabens in your life, it's important to, in, you know, look at the link that we provided in our references and, you know, just choose higher quality pH balance lubes that don't use parabens. There's a lot of negative things about out there about parabens. They're not the best thing, but you really have to be, it's like selective, right? A drink every once in a while isn't harmful. But if you're drinking all day long, seven days a week, yeah, you know what? That's probably going to mess you up. Well, and the long and short of it is, if you're out there shopping for those organic vegetables from Whole Foods that have never been touched by pesticides and groomed by hand, picked at the ripest, why would you put cheap lube in your vagina? Right. Or oil-based lube in your vagina when it's not designed to have oil shoved in it. <laughs> it's not natural. Types of lube base. We've got your water. We got your glycerin. We got your silicone, your petroleum, and your oil. So water and or aloe-based lubes have a pH and an osmolality value. Typically, they have some of the best ingredients without the harmful low-grade chemicals that interact and disrupt your natural flora balance and cause irritation or spark off an episode of BV and all the water-based products we're going to talk about are either free of most of all or the following, your petrochemicals, your parabens, your, and your glycerin. So, 
they also tend to be eco-friendly, organic, and vegan, and all are pH balanced. Which is great, because if you're vegan and you're eating pussy, <laughs> these lubes won't be violating <laughs> your dietary constraints. Absolutely. You're which like... is really important when you're eating. <laughs> Water-based products. One of the ones I use and love is Good Clean Love. It feels great. It's great. It's a woman-based company. I'm pretty sure it is woman-based. And, or all women-owned, I think is what I want to say. They have two lubricants plus a fertility lubricant and vaginal care plus a feminine hygiene line of products. I... In use full their disclosure. products. Yeah. I use their products, and I've used them for a few years here now. And honestly, I haven't had an issue. My body doesn't retaliate with these products, so honestly, I just keep on using them. They're great lubricants. They don't dry out. They don't get sticky. Um, I love them. They yeah. feel great. Yeah. I haven't noticed anything. You tend to use maybe a little more. Some of their bottles um, uh, dispense quite a bit. So you have to be careful how you dispense them. Yeah, there's two that they make. One that's a gel and uh -huh. one that's like a liquid. The liquid yeah. one, squeeze gently. <laughs> In the heat of the moment, when we <laughs> had a room of a bunch of people having sex. I know. The liquid-based one probably not the best choice because all of a sudden you realize you're lubricated from about the fingertip to the waist yeah yeah it was a lot everybody's soaked yeah because it just comes out yeah it comes out yeah but the have... gel one kind of sticks in your palm and you can yeah control the flow a little bit better right right works yeah. really good so initially i was like freaking out because i'm like no that's my expensive lube but then i was like you know what whatever I'm contributing to the health of every pussy in this room. And if so, that's it, then so be it. Because, you know. Yeah. I mean, she could be like three people away, but the lube comes out so quickly and so <laughs> easily. Everybody's lubed on the bed. No, it's not true. We pass it around. Oh, that part. Yeah. We, we pass, do pass it, it around. We have applicators for this. <laughs> yeah. I carry one with me all the time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> mm. So we have tried and used Sliquid and they have an extensive line. They've got their Sliquid Naturals and their Organics and their Naturals line has about five ingredients in it. Super Actually, small. it only has five ingredients in it. And it's definitely something for everyone to explore. I'm going to explore it a little bit more because when I was doing this research, I, I, when we first started using their product, they didn't have this much. Right. And I, when I went into their website recently, I was like, whoa. Yeah. They just had one product at the time. Yeah. They've got a ton now. So, you know, I encourage you to check it out, try it, see how you like it. Uh, Sutil by Hathor is formulated with seven simple botanical ingredients and is a lube I'm also anxious to try. I haven't tried Ooh, that one I yet. I volunteer. All right. All right. And aloe cadabra. I want to say I tried this. We tried an aloe one. We've tried aloe-based ones, but not this one. Okay. This one is NSF certified as a menopausal and postmenopausal vaginal moisturizer and 95% organic aloe vera with a vitamin E oil plus other natural ingredients. I do want to test this one, too. We need to get on that. We need to... Try a bunch of lubes? Yeah, we need to order oh, okay. some of these. That's on the to-do list, actually. Um, baby, I'll be your dipstick. <laughs> Try them you all out. You my tester? Yeah. Yay! I have highly specialized instruments for oh. these kinds oh, of tests. Gotcha. All right. I will take you up on that. Mm, okay. So... As I mentioned earlier, go to Smitten Kitten's website. They've got this chart on the pH levels of water-based lubricants. Again, we posted that in our notes. It is amazing. It's it's 
beautiful colors. It's super easy to read and it's very clear. So that'll help you narrow your choices if you want to start with focusing on pH first. All right. Glycerin glycol based lubricants used as a humectant retaining water and emollient and when it comes to individual ingredients that cause vaginal pH imbalances and aggravate the skin of the vulva and the walls of the vagina glycerin is the patron saint of irritants and food for yeasts oh that's that's great yeah 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 so it is the forefront of main offenders and you know what the confusing part is um glycerin retains water and it but it doesn't retain the water in you the reason it retains its humectant capability is that it pulls the water from your vagina actually drying you out so it makes it more moist because it's dehydrating you right Instead of bringing water to the vagina, it's pulling all the water out of the cells of the vagina, yes. making the the lube wetter because right. it's dehydrated you. Yeah, it's effed up. So since the concentration percentage is not required to be listed on the product, imagine that. This is according to an article by the WHO. It can actually start breaking down your mucous membranes depending on the concentration why but, you know you ask like well okay i use glycerin on my face why is that you know not an issue i use it to hydrate my face but as we talked earlier that outer layer of skin has that additional keratinized protective layer that makes your skin waterproof and the inner layer of the Vagina and cheeks, they don't have that. So they're more fragile. Here's the fact. Your skin is designed to be exposed to the rain. Your vagina? <laughs> Not <laughs> so much. Right. This now, is if you're why really sex into in the pool, yoga, sex in the hot tub, it it's sounds bad. sexy and it is sexy. It, yeah, it's but it's hot. so bad. You get the chlorine in there and the bacteria and the water and oh god, it's and the heat. Oh, it's so bad. So if you're gonna have sex in the rain, don't do it in the hot tub, but do it out in the rain. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps on a floating duck in the yeah. rainforest of a, Costa Rica. A, yes, a a purified. Oh, what is it? Where they bottle those. You know, purified natural glacier waters, you mm. know, prior to all the... <laughs> Fiji water yeah. for your vagina. Yeah. Water that's, you know, been melted from 3,000 years ago before we had cars and air pollution, right? That water. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Mm. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, glycol, glycol. which is glycerin and alcohol is an irritant and because of it it significantly increases susceptibility to herpes simplex virus 2 your bv and it kills your lactobacillus crispitus the dominant bacterial species in the vagina that gives you a healthy vaginal barrier hmm gotta love that glycol well and specifically don't take shots with your vagina because alcohol in the vagina is not good <laughs> i guarantee you if you try that your girl oh, is god. not gonna be happy with you it's going to burn oh god wait what was that Oh, was it a movie we were watching? They were doing like vagina shots, shots. and don't put lemon juice on your oh, vagina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. They were taking uh, shots of tequila and yeah, using don't the, do it. the vagina, the, the pussy lips as the, the the lemon and the salt. Yeah. Salt? Probably I guess okay. The salt would be all right. But not, the not lemon. lemon juice. <laughs> they said that really stung. You're going to get punched. I'm just telling you. <laughs> 
punched. I have in the to face. see that though. I I would dare someone to do that. I I would watch that. Oh, That'd you're be so funny. Bad. I know. If only wait, YouTube. Wait, what would am post I saying? That. I'm all about vaginal health. What? Uh, uh, but it's entertaining. So. If you are not naturally well lubricated due to many reasons, uh, avoid the bad stuff for your vagina. And, you know, often you can't get all the information you need on the product label uh, that, you know, they're a known irritant. You know, whatever they put on there is not going to, you're not going to know. So, you know, do your re- research and avoid, avoid those products, those ingredients. Well, hence the product. Right. Because silicone based. They're not going to have a pH and osmolality value because they're inert. Right. They're they're also not a good vaginal moisturizer for vaginal dryness or dyspareunia. 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 According to a couple studies I read, which I put in the notes. Which is always good to read. I know. That was hard to say, dyspareunia, but now dyspareunia. I got it. Dyspareunia. I love, I love, it was a challenge practicing some of these words. Yeah. You know, if you, if you're not a scientist. A scientist, right. Or a doctor with a PhD. Right. And so... Here I am reading these scientific articles and I go, I go five words in and I'm like, Ooh, long word. Oh, what's that? Look it up. Okay. Got it. Read three words. Oh, what's that word? Look it up. (laughs) Took me forever (laughs) to dissect some of this stuff. I felt like I was, you know, a paralegal all over again. Right. You know, once you once you get it, get the lingo, it's this language in your head and you're like, yup, yup, I know it. And then, you know, you got it. But I, I can speak lawyer ease, but I can't speak science ease. Mm. Some of those scientific papers are crazy. Oh, yeah. So anyway, it was, it was fun. So dyspareunia. Silicone based is lubes are also really bad for toys especially the really good toys which by the way are silicone Mm -hmm. so a liquid silicone will actually start to break down your very expensive very good silicone based Mm -hmm. toys and honestly if you take really good care of them i've had a really nice dildo for oh god years before i met you they it's last a long time 15 20 years they're not cheap no I mean, it was not well cheap built and i take good care of that <laughs> it takes good care of you too <laughs> and, and it's in very good health <laughs> that toy is very appreciative oh my goodness one of the good things about silicone-based lubes is it's safe for condoms. It's not going to break them down. Mm-hmm. Keep this in mind. We didn't mention this with glycerin lubes, but glycerin lubes are also safe with condoms. Yeah. But remember, there's more. So far, the two lubes we've mentioned are all safe with condoms. Yeah. Uber lube, one of our favorites We've played with it a little bit. Yeah. It's made you... from pure silicone. Uh-huh. It has a tiny bit of vitamin E for smoothness. It's free of parabens, preservatives, and petrochemicals. It's it's not sticky. Mm-mm. It's very slippery, but not in kind of a wet way, but yeah. in a, like a slick way. Yeah. It's hard and to it... describe. It has, God, people use it in sports too. Like they'll, they'll, they'll advertise it on their website. You know, it's good for sports, for anti-chafing. Right. But Ed really likes it because it's, it cre- it's weird. It feels like it gives you a little extra friction. Yeah. So it's. Stiction. Stiction. But it, it doesn't build friction. 
it, yeah, it doesn't build up heat, but it kind of, it's not slippery, but it slides. Yeah. So it's, it's moving, but kind of, just, hmm. it's not sticky, but it's not as slick or as slippery as like, uh, the water base, the water base loops. Yeah. And you kind of like it cause it gives you a little more, uh, a little more grab. Te- yeah, a little more grab, te- texture, textile yeah. feeling. Yeah. So, so we, we've played with that. We like it. Yeah. Um, I honestly haven't gone back to that to play with that for a while because I was having issues with all these other lubes and I was a human Petri dish and I was experimenting on myself and trying a bunch of stuff. And so I hadn't basically reset my body yet to to test this lube out for a period of time to see how I reacted. So it's latex compatible and it has a pH value of 4.6. And like I said, their bottle dispenses. Yeah. It's a nice pump. It's their, their pump is designed to specifically the exact amount deliver just a little bit with each pump versus yeah. like um, the sliquid, which is more of a gloop, like a big glob that comes mm-hmm. out. Um, it's the right proportion for the amount of slipperiness. So with silicone lube, you don't need a lot. You only mm-hmm. need a, like one or two pumps and it's probably good. It's like a very thin layer that, that gives you just a little bit of slipperiness. Right. They say you can use it on your hair, and you actually used it on your beard the other day because here did. we are in COVID, and we're just letting all of our hair grow long. Not me, but Ed is. I am. I'm all. I'm all mountain. So man. how was it on on your beard? Did it, it was work? good? Yeah. Yeah. Did it, it was make good. it softer? Kind of tame everything down. It, it it kind of worked like a good hair product and kind of slicked it down. Huh. Yeah. Maybe you should use that some more. I'll try it some more. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll experiment both. I'll lubricate my beard and you can lubricate your vagina. <laughs> Maybe at the I same labor- time. Yeah, I'll lab- you lubricate my vagina with your face. And then you apply it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's a good applicator. I'll just put a couple pumps down there and you just rub your face all over it. Peace. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say this. Petroleum-based, not safe for vaginas. <laughs> if you want to you want to stroke yourself, go for it. Yep. Use the Vaseline, whatever. Penis skin can handle all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I know, know. Guys have masturbated with the wackiest shit. I mean, somebody's out there with a belt sander, I'm sure oh, of it. Oh, my Lord. But... In the vagina. <laughs> it's it's not good. It's oh, really, really not good. It's not even natural. I mean, this is basically natural. an extract. It didn't go into your car to be burned as fuel. They made it into a jelly. It's bad. It's not even good for burns. Like, don't put petroleum, Vaseline on a burn. It's really, really bad stuff. It does hold in moisture. So if you've got chapped lips, sure. Yeah. Rock it. Rock it. (laughs) But don't... mm, (laughs) No petroleum in vagina. In the vajayj. Okay. Oil-based. Everyone's favorite coconut oil. Coconut oh, it's oil. natural. It's the miracle. It's antibacterial. <gasps> All right. I had a real issue with this in the beginning. We've had some experiences with coconut yes! oil. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this oil does have some antibacterial properties and some studies show it also works as an antifungal since it's an oil it has no ph value but it's not safe to use with latex or polyisoprene condoms latex dams or toys it will degrade them so not only is it bad for your vagina it 
breaks down the condoms. So those people right. who are playing safely wearing condoms and you use coconut oil. It's counterproductive. You might as well just poke a hole in the condom. and Yeah, just why waste your, yeah, why waste the money on the condom? It's ridiculous. You're going to break it down. We have seen so many parties with, with this stuff. And then people are passing around the dar- jar and they're like dipping their hands in it. Dirty nasty fingers it's or, gross they just had their fingers in someone else's vagina and they re-dip in there and then, and i'm like um but it's antibacterial so it'll be okay it's not okay no it's really not it's not and <laughs> one of the really cool things that we've seen at a party is somebody spills the coconut oil all over the furniture and the carpet it's not dispensed with the pump it's not designed for those let's say extreme games that most of these parties turn into <laughs> ruckus party you got to have a pump folks it's got to have a lid on it if it's just an open container it's going to spill and guaranteed that cleaning i know that exact party mm. i that was a good party talk about that that was a good party except for the coconut oil i felt so bad their carpet oh my god <sighs> Oh, I was like, I had a hard time leaving going, are you, sh-? I, I asked can we them, contribute are to you the sure, bill? can I help with that? Because I was not the person that knocked it over, but no. I felt terrible leaving knowing that they had this big mess to clean up. I was like, ooh. I felt pretty good at the end of that party, <laughs> but a little bad about the coconut oil. Oh my goodness. And they're no longer in the lifestyle. So that's a bummer. <sighs> Would they say uh, 18 months? 18 months, the span of a swinger. Beat the statistics. Many scientific articles that I read will state that it has these antibacterial properties, and they're but they're you know highly dependent on how processed the oil is, whether it's ingested, inserted, or topical, and the types of bacteria it affects. I have not found a study that has a large enough case study testing the effectiveness as a vaginal lubricant and safety. And more specifically, if it's antibacterial, there are good bacteria that live in the vagina. And this is the key thing. You're shoving antibiotics into a bacteria haven the vagina has good bacteria things that prevent yeast infections thing bacteria that prevent disease and you're shoving in antibiotics to kill all of the good bacteria too yeah. so antibiotics are not discriminatory oh like you can go no you can't <laughs> you die and you're okay. It doesn't work like oh, that. Oh, you're HIV. I see you coming. I'll take you out. Bam, bam. Of course, that's a virus, but I know. Uh, points the same. Yeah. So, in conclusion, you know, what I've read, I, you know, honestly, I don't use it. And I definitely don't use a community jar. Where everyone's dipping their fingers into it. That's just gross. It's like the jar of peanuts at the bar, right? Uh, Everybody's got their dirty fingers uh, in it. And you're like, hmm, what? that sounds tasty. So if you're going to use it, use organic, extra virgin, and dispense a small amount into a separate jar to use and refresh every six months. That's the recommendation. Dispense with a spoon or clean finger, but no double dipping. So... I mean, you know, it's up to you to use it. I I would not recommend I personally it. didn't find any scientific articles on what Ed said about it, you know, being killing off good bacteria and bad bacteria, which is actually Ed why I took that out of there. That was That's me. But <laughs> you know, I mean, that's my own hypothesis. I I couldn't find anything to support it. So I didn't put that in there, but you know. But there's it, also not a lot of studies that support using a lot it or of, not using it. And there's not a lot of studies that support all the other good stuff or bad stuff that's on the shelf. So, right. you know. Use some common sense here, folks. Typically, my vagina does not excrete oil. So, I'm, you know, I'm not, not going to put an oil up there. So, Don't do it. There you go. So, 
anal play, you know, if you're in that little side note here. Um, there are different lubes for that and we'll cover that in another podcast. But in the meantime, you should know that your rectal pH is different at a 7.0 pH and your mucus levels are different too. So you should research your lube for your rectum if you're going to have anal play because it's different. And you're irritating all of those tissues just like you're irritating your vaginal tissues by having sex. Especially, well, at least maybe it's just the way we have sex with that many people. There's a lot of activity down there. There's some, there's some work going on. <laughs> oh, you mean the the orgies? Yeah. Well, you know that's. <laughs> I mean, that's like some pro sports angle there. <laughs> I mean, you know the the occasional. Oh, my husband, you know, and I did anal once a month. I, you know, it's probably not gonna, you know, be that bad. But you know, if it's if it's something that you do often and you really enjoy it, I really enjoy it. We don't do it often enough, so. Let's get on that, Ed. We need to get some more of that special loop. Oh, twist in my <laughs> arm. Okay. So the more often you, you do it, you just, you know, you want to be kind to your body. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I wish we could rely on the FDA to stamp all these lubes as approved and uh, like they have in Europe but instead you know of using our own vaginas as petri dishes you know we just have to kind of figure it out as we go and rely on research and studies that have been done which yeah. are few and far between yeah there is hope though as more companies like good clean love are winning approval from the FDA for all or some of their products passing without animal testing. Yeah, I actually read up on that. It was pretty interesting. They um, they had to they had to go through a pretty long process and put some uh, quite a bit of money up front to propose a different method of testing and have that approved by the FDA, and that you know, ended up panning out really well for them. So it, it was impressive. They're, I, I, you know, I like them. They, um, their mission and their ethics are really good. Spot on. Yeah. Please check out some of the lubes we've reviewed here. Obviously experiment as much as you can with as many lubes as you can mm-hmm. More sex. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Mm. And remember, you can actually reduce your STI exposure by using quality and safe products. Plus, have a happy and healthy vagina. Because a happy and healthy vagina will be available a lot more. (laughs) Uh, yeah. Which is really good. That's true. All right, everyone. Be Be safe. safe. And keep, keep swinging. On swinging. Woo! Before you turn off our podcast to take care of all the vanilla things pulling you away, please reach out and give us a review. I am the first to admit that it's much easier to give a five star rating, which we appreciate, but if you could take 43 seconds to type a review, we would love it. If you want to share a personal story, ask us questions or share your comments, you can contact us at swingeruniversity at gmail.com. Check us out at swingeruniversity.com where you can find links to our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Thank you so much for listening to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment podcast. Mm -hmm.